who would have thought that a person who is being probed by the EFCC for an alleged fraud of 70 billion naira alongside a series of other allegations leveled against him would make it to Tinubu's ministerial list. Despite his promise to Nigerians to appoint only competent and qualified technocrats who would assist him in lifting the country out of hardship and taking almost a day to deadline before releasing the names of the first batch of ministerial nominees. One would expect that the president was really taking his time in order to come up with the best men for the job. With these names on the list, we definitely have our doubts. Hi everyone and welcome to another video on InfoBustop YouTube channel where we keep you up to date with the latest news trends and info in Nigeria and Africa. In this episode, we'll be investigating 5 most controversial personalities that made it to the ministerial list of President Bola Tinubu. Let's dive right in. First on the list is Senator Sonny Abubakar Danladi. The ministerial nominee from Taraba State, Senator Sonny Abubakar Danladi, who is also a former acting governor and deputy governor of Taraba State. Danladi's political journey took off in 2006 when he served as the local government chairman of Karim Lamido local government area, Taraba State. In 2011, he became the running mate of Dan Baba Suntai in the Taraba State gubernatorial elections, which the duo won on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. PDP. However, the controversies began when Danladi was impeached on the grounds of gross misconduct by the Taraba State House of Assembly in September 4, 2012. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court in Abuja ruled in his favor and overturned his impeachment in November 2014. He then returned to office as acting governor of Taraba due to Dambaba's illness after being involved in an air crash. In the 2015 elections, Danladi contested for the Taraba North senatorial seat on the platform of the PDP which he won. He however was sacked as a senator by the Supreme Court on June 23, 2017. Subsequently in 2019, Danladi defected to the All Progressives Congress APC where he contested for the Taraba governorship but he lost to Darius Ishaku of PDP. In 2019, based on reports from credible sources, Sonny Abubakar Danladi's political career almost imploded after he was accused of presenting a questionable work certificate to INEC and lying on oath in his form CF001 before the 2019 election about his age. The Federal High Court, Jalingo, consequently barred Danladi from contesting for or holding political offices for 10 years on the alleged grounds of forgery and age falsification. However, when asked by the Senate to respond to these allegations during ministerial screening, Danladi denied such, insisting that the case is presently at the Supreme Court and that the Apex Court is yet to give a judgment on the matter. But shouldn't he be waiting for the judgment outside the list? Number 2. Adeboyega Oyetola Adeboyega Isiaka Oyetola CON is a Nigerian politician who served as governor of Oshun State from 2018 to 2022. Prior to his winning the election, he was the chief of staff to his predecessor, Rauf Aregbeshola. From his commendable stint in the corporate world of insurance to his trick in the Nigerian political scene, Oyotola truly comes off as a man of good character, brilliant, ambitious, and loyal. However, based on a Premium Times report, former Oshun governor Oyetola sabotaged his own country and even himself when he was involved in the acquisition of a London mansion from an international fugitive wanted by law enforcement agencies for money laundering, Kola Wale Aluku. The report emerged as part of a global Pandora Papers reporting project led by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, ICIJ. It revealed that an offshore company incorporated by Oyetola alongside his close associates, Elusoni Eludoyin, known as Aranda Overseas Corporation, based in the British Virgin Islands, a known tax haven, had bought the house from former British Virgin Islands-based offshore company that was formed by Kola Aluku right before the Nigerian authorities were attempting to freeze Aluku's assets. According to the UK's National Building Society, the house which is valued at 17 million euros but for about 9 million euro, much lower than its actual worth. Notably, the property which is a mansion situated at 32 Grove End Road in the wealthy Westminster neighborhood of London is the residence of President Tinubu and even served as some sort of resort to his associates and politicians of the ruling APC, especially in 2021 when President Tinubu was recuperating after receiving treatment for an undisclosed ailment why Oyetola should be prosecuted. In Nigeria, Section 6 of the Code of Conduct Bureau and Tribunal Act stipulates that a person is statutorily obligated to withdraw from engaging in or directing a private business, except if it is farming, 
upon being a public officer. By remaining a director of Global Offshore for the entire period it was chief of staff to former governor Arek Beshola, Mr. Oyetola violated Nigeria's Code of Conduct law and should be arraigned before the Code of Conduct Tribunal and prosecuted for the infraction. But since the federal government has chosen to reward him instead with a ministerial position for his supposed loyalty to the incumbent president, who are we to uphold the rule of law? Number 3. Abubakar Atiku Bagudu There is arguably no name more linked to Abacha's loot in recent times than Bagudu alias Abacha's money bag. Abubakar Atiku Bagudu CON, is a Nigerian politician who served as governor of Kebi State, Nigeria. Between May 2015 and May 2023, he was also a former senator representing Kebi Central constituency of Kebi State, now ministerial nominee. According to the People's Gazette, before becoming Kebi governor, Mr. Bagudu was a bagman for General Abacha and assisted in laundering a large chunk of the estimated $2.2 billion stolen by the late kleptomaniac Nigerian head of state. In 2003, Bagudu was arrested and extradited from Houston, Texas at the request of Jersey, where he had set up a shell company called Duraville Properties to launder funds stolen from Nigeria. He eventually reached a settlement, agreeing to return $160 million of stolen money in exchange for deportation to Nigeria to face trial, a trial that never happened upon his return to Nigeria, despite considerable evidence from legal authorities in the US, Jersey and Switzerland. Based on reports, the US government repatriated over $780 million of embezzled funds from Nigeria that Bagudu played a role in stealing during the five-year regime of General Sonny Abacha. More recently, after the conclusion of his administration, Premium Times gathered that the former Kebi state governor did not appear before the state's lawmakers which summoned him over an alleged misappropriation of 18 billion naira. In a letter by the acting clerk of the house, Suleiman Shamaki, the assembly had invited the governor to appear before it in order to explain how the 18 billion naira federal government loan they approved in 2021 for the state was spent. And on number 4 is the very nominee who inspired the introduction of this episode, Belo Matawale. Honestly, if there is anyone who should not make it to the ministerial list, Matawale should definitely top that list. Belo Mohammed, also called Belo Matawale, is a Nigerian politician and teacher who served as the governor of Zamfara State from 2019 to 2023. Now, don't let this guileless face deceive you. This man is as controversial as controversial can get. As we speak, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, recently revealed that the former governor of Zamfara is being investigated over allegations of corruption, award of phantom contracts and diversion worth over 70 billion naira. Although Bilo Matawale also claimed that EFCC ousted chairman Abdul Rashid Bawa allegedly demanded $2 million as a bribe from him, he is yet to outrightly refute the allegations leveled against him. On June 9, 2023, Zamfara state government confirmed the operation of the Nigeria police force that led to the recovery and impoundment of stolen vehicles by the former state governor, Belo Matawale. According to a statement by the spokesperson of the Zamfara governor, Sulaiman Idris, over 40 vehicles were recovered including 3 bulletproof vehicles and 8 SUV. Number 5 on the list needs no introduction, Yensom Ezenwo Wike. If there is any word to describe Yensom Wike aka Mr. Project, it will definitely be controversial. From party controversy to elections and ethno-religious controversies, Mr. Wike ticked all boxes. Even former Imo state governor Ruchas Okorocha once described Yensom Wike as one of the most controversial politicians in Nigeria. Indeed, Mr. Wike thrives on being in the spotlight, overly zestful, making impulsive statements and being crafty thereby steering controversies with little regard to the effect of such actions on his person or political ambition. A typical example of Wiki's extremities would be when he allegedly ordered the demolition of a mosque in Port Harcourt. Although stories were twisted to paint Mr. Wiki as Islamophobic, what really exaggerated the mosque demolition controversy was the governor's repeated claim in the past that Rivers is a Christian state, whereas the nation's constitution forbids the federal and state governments from adopting any religion as a state religion. More so, following Wike's recent ministerial nomination by President Tinubu, his erratic nature has once again put him at a crossroad and under immense pressure. This follows the resurfacing of old videos of him vowing not to be a minister or moving to the All Progressives Congress APC, on social media. 
for a man who wields so much influence in River State and even delivered the position of his successor to his chosen candidate on a platter of gold, one could not help but wonder how an opposition party was able to pull such massive votes in the backyard of their greatest critic. Wike seemed quite delighted when asked by the Senate to take a bow and lead during screening for a man who once made such bold statements against all odds. His volatile nature could further strain his relationship with PDP, leading to internal conflicts and dissent as well as increased voices calling for his suspension from PDP, whom many party faithfuls have described as overambitious and a pretender. For a fact, Nigerians are tired of leaders using political positions to compensate allies, party loyalists and individuals with serious integrity issues and no demonstrative process in their past assignments. It's high time the political massaging stops. What Nigeria needs at this point in a democracy are people without any corruption baggage, who are competent, very progressive and qualified and able to deliver under any political portfolio. So, who is the most controversial on the list for you? Kindly leave your response in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give this a like, share with your friends and family and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to keep you updated for more informative videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.